Do you remember that crazy, wild conspiracy theory that I started a couple of years ago? You know, the one where I said that there would be a global framework for a central bank digital currency eventually, probably made by the IMF, otherwise known as the International Mafia Fund. Well, check this out. The CBDC or the Central Bank Digital Currency is all set to go global thanks to the International Monetary Fund, which is working on a global platform for CBDC transactions. Sorry, what was that I just heard? The IMF are actually implementing what I said years ago that was hailed as this massive conspiracy theory. Yes, I think that is what we've just heard with our own ears and seen with our own eyes. The IMF wants countries to agree on a common framework for digital currencies for two main reasons here. A common law will help in easy transaction of CBDCs around the world. A global framework will keep a check on unregulated cryptocurrencies. She said, I'm quoting here, if countries develop CBDCs only for domestic deployment, we are underutilizing their capacity for this reason, IMF is working on the concept of a global CBDC platform. Okay, I think we get the idea of what exactly is going on here. And one key thing that I want to pick out of there, they're saying that if they just use it as, as what it is designed to be used for right now, then they are underutilizing the potential of the CBDC platform. I wonder what they mean by that. Well. As usual, I've pulled together a load of articles and information for you today, which I think might just explain what it is they mean. So let's check it out. And just in case anyone thinks that maybe I've misunderstood or maybe Weon's misunderstood, here is Bloomberg and here's the headline, IMF working hard on the global CBDC platform concept. We've also got this from Reuters, IMF working on global central bank currency platform. So it is right across the mainstream media now, even though they said this was a big conspiracy theory and that there wouldn't be any global centralized platform for all the CBDCs. But of course, what have I been doing? I've been tracking these things for you with the CBDC tracker. So we'll touch upon that in a moment. But here's what they're saying. The IMF wants central banks to agree on a common regulatory framework for digital currencies that will allow global interoperability. Failure to agree on a common platform would create a vacuum that would likely be filled by cryptocurrencies. Well, yeah, I mean, is that so bad if there were cryptocurrencies in which are decentralized as opposed to centralized CBDCs. And I'll show you a list of problems in a moment with these CBDCs. A CBDC is a digital currency controlled by the central bank while cryptocurrencies are nearly always decentralized. Already 114 central banks are at some stage of CBDC exploration, with about 10 already crossing the finish line. If countries develop CBDCs, DBCs, I think I mean CBDCs, only for domestic deployment, we are underutilizing their capacity. Now, it's pretty obvious to me what they have planned here, but we'll come to that in a moment because it's pretty sinister. Now, here's a number of things that they will be able to do with the CBDC. They will be able to customize it for individuals. Hmm, I wonder why they might want to customize it for you. They can be frozen easily or seized. Holding can be limited. In fact, we already did the video on that. If you haven't seen it, it is absolute paramount viewing on my channel where I actually analyzed the full framework of the Bank of England, Central Bank Digital Currency, a dystopian nightmare. And they've said very clearly that holding will be limited to five to 10,000 pounds and it will be a separate currency to the pound. How on earth that is gonna work, uh, we're not sure, although I do have my theories. Tax can be automatically taken. So you imagine that they make a mistake on your tax bill. Well, they'll just absolutely take all of your money and then it's up to you to claim it back. Fines can be automatically taken. Maybe you don't agree with the fine. Too bad. It will be automatically taken. Purchases can be controlled. What do you think that means? We've already seen some of these ideas and concepts that have been put forward in different parliaments. Everything from meat to flying, to the control of vehicles, 
all of these different things that they are talking about. Expiry dates, so they can increase money velocity or the velocity of money so that you spend your money and keep the economy flowing. Limits on spending can be set. This is another thing we know, especially on certain products. Location limits can be applied and time limits can be set. Now the location limits is one of those things I warned you about a long time ago, way before we heard about these 15 minute cities. That is what I think is potentially going to come in, especially with all the CO2, methane, nitrous oxide and GHG, greenhouse gases, etc. What better smokescreen to keep people in 15 minute cities than to stop people traveling? In fact, remember the video, what's happened in France now? Domestic flights where there is a train in that same area are now illegal. That is not my word using that word illegal. That is the media's word. They are saying that domestic flights are now illegal in France if there's a train there. And even then they're talking about later on uh, other things. We, we won't go into all of that. It gets really crazy. We know about the meat, we know about the animals, we know about the farming. I mean, it is getting nuts. And I wanna try and piece some of this together for you rather than sort of lead you all the way and tell you exactly what I think. I wanna just show you some ideas today and we'll sort of put this together very loosely and then you can give me your thoughts in the comments as to whether you agree with this, maybe I'm overstretching, maybe you have other ideas, uh, drop it in the comments below because that's what this community is all about. So we have had some advancements then in terms of the tracker. We have had a lot more countries now move from development stage into the pilot stage. So Australia is now in pilot, so is, is South Africa, and we also have Sweden now in pilot. It's not really any surprise to me that Sweden's in the pilot stage because they were the first country to try out that grain of rice uh, chip in the hand and all of that sort of strange stuff. When Elias Brodberger goes to work, he doesn't need ID and he doesn't need money. In fact, much of what he needs to get through the day is hidden right there, just below the surface in his hand. Embedded in his hand is a microchip that serves as his keys, his ID, and his wallet. The United Kingdom, we've got the USA, Canada, we've got all these other countries now, a lot of Europe, or Western Europe in particular, are now in this uh, stage, which is known as development. So it is moving very, very quickly. We have the timeline. I still think 2025 for most Western countries, 2026 for the launch. Now over in the UK then, there was a petition to actually stop the programmable, keyword here, nature of a CBDC in the UK. Unfortunately, it didn't get the 100,000 signatures required. But then again, all of the COVID stuff got over 100,000 and they didn't debate everything that was you know, brought up on that anyway. So even if it did reach 100,000, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't debate it in the first place. Uh, government responded, the government has no plans to program any future UK CBDC or restrict how money is spent. That is a blatant lie because we already did that video and I covered the whole thing. In fact, for those of you who haven't seen it, let me just find it for you a second. Okay, so if you just go onto my channel here and in the search bar, you type in CBDC. If you just go down, it's the third video here. It says the UK central bank digital currency, full analysis and review. One month ago, 126,000 views. It is a long one, it's 44 minutes long, but that will tell you absolutely everything you need to know about this CBDC. So this is a complete lie. They do have plans because it's in their document. They are going to program it. So now let's look at the next thing I wanna show you there. United Nations planning digital ID linked to bank accounts. Now, remember, it's not just bank accounts. This is the CBDC, the digital ID linked to the CBDC. And of course, you know where this stores stuff always comes out if you see the image here. So what are they saying? The plan, which is similar to the system developed by the WEF, is outlined in three new policy briefs from the UN. Uh, I haven't actually read these policy briefs yet, but I will do over the next week or so. A global digital compact reforms 
to the international financial architecture and the future of outer space governance. Okay, that's a that's a weird one for another day. But you can see here, clear as day, they are creating this international global financial architecture. Uh, the goal of the brief is to advance the UN's vision for the future. Now, vision for the future is actually an event. It's, um, I wonder if I've got it on here. Oh yeah, here it is. It's actually September of 2024. They call it the Summit for the Future. So this is a, an, an event that's gonna be coming out in September of 2024. I will of course cover it. I've already read a lot of it and it's weird, weird stuff, some of the stuff that they are uh, pushing. The unelected organization, remember that is what they are, unelected, are talking about this international cooperation. And whenever you hear the word stakeholders, just think of rich people, just, just replace that with rich people and rich companies and you'll understand what stakeholders means. So what is this vision for the future? It's harmonized with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. That's the UN pledge and you can read all about that as well. Meanwhile, the WEF has just partnered with a biometrics company and this is all about the fourth industrial revolution. Again, you can find all of that information on my video on the Great Reset. But this stuff, ladies and gents, is just accelerating like crazy. Uh, if you wanna read about Summit of the Future, I will do a video on it, but it's uh, here, this document here, just do a, a search for it, 22, 23 September, 2024. Now, the other thing that is being suggested at the moment is digital fingerprints. So you always know that something's being pushed when you have just huge amounts of media at exactly the same time. So this has all happened in the last three days. We've got Obama talking about everyone needs to have these digital IDs for the internet. We've got the United Nations here that I just showed you talking about it. We've got the WEF talking about it. We've got all the media talking about it. Everyone is talking about this digital ID. And why? Because they say they need it to combat misinformation and distinguish between true and misleading news. Now, the worrying thing from all of this, we won't go into the whole article here, but the worrying thing about this, and you've heard me talk about this a few times on videos now, mainly on the walk and talks, where I've said, I'm really focusing now on getting as much information and even my courses and things like that out to you as I can, because I don't think in the future I will be permitted to even have this channel anymore because what they want to do is, is sort of have this governance of the internet and of what they call influencers. So one of the biggest problems they had during the sort of COVID era, 2020 to let's say late 2022, was that there was a lot of people that didn't agree with the information. I was actually one of them. I didn't agree with the majority of stuff that we were seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. It just didn't make sense when you actually looked into a lot of this stuff. But of course, anybody who opposed that narrative and said anything that maybe opposed it in any way was completely canceled, their YouTube channels canceled and things like that. That was really just one phase and it wiped out a lot of channels, unfortunately. But I think that was just the beginning and, and we're having these acts that are passing through parliament, we're having it pass through the, the US Congress and, and all sorts of other countries at exactly the same, same time at the moment, all of these acts to actually restrict the freedom of, of people. And in fact, I've got another article before I forget about this. And this one is from the Irish Green Party. So they are calling for the limiting of free speech. The Irish Green Party followed many around the world this week and came out for censorship and speech control. Indeed, the party went full Orwellian, called for restricting freedom to protect it. You gotta love this uh, zero hedge. They come out with some pretty funny stories sometime. And I always have to double check all of this information. So I, I did, uh, and this was it here. It was on Tuesday 13th of June. I have no idea what that says. If there's any Irish people uh, watching this, someone tell me what, what on earth that means because I have absolutely no idea. But I've read through this, it is an absolute beast, and it is legit. They did actually call for the restriction of freedom of speech in order to protect 
freedom of speech. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So rather than calling it censorship, they call it content moderation. But actually, it's the exact same thing. And they're calling for these digital IDs and calling for everything else in order to protect people and saying there's too much misinformation going around and we need to actually make sure that the people who are giving out information over platforms like YouTube, me for example, they have to make sure that I've been vetted, they have to make sure that you know I'm a qualified person to talk about what I'm talking about. You know, people like me who just talk from common sense, logic and doing research and then giving my opinion, well that's that's not good. They they don't want that. They don't want opinions. They want facts, but the facts have to be from one side and one side only. So I'll keep going as long as I can with my content, but honestly, I'm not uh, I'm not hopeful at all. The Irish legislation is likely to be replicated around the world if the free speech community cannot hold the line against the anti-free speech movement. It's part of an unrelenting movement in Europe, particularly by the EU, to roll back Western free speech values that once defined countries. Yeah, and I completely agree with that. I think that is what they're doing. And there's all sorts of other things. The UN's just unveiled this automated fact-checking tool. And remember this that's been absolutely blasted this week. This was the BlackRock CEO and he's been absolutely destroyed over what he said. And you know, I won't play the video. You've probably seen it already. Loads of people have covered it already. But BlackRock has $10 trillion um, AUM, assets under management. They are the biggest investment management company, brokerage, whatever you want to call them, in the world. And what are they doing? They are forcing ESG behaviors on company, they are forcing people to adopt certain behaviors. And he says that if people don't adopt those behaviors, that they will force those behaviors onto people. But it's not just this, look what else has just been announced. Uh, as I said, this all comes out at the same time, it's not a coincidence. The WHO adopts European style, you know what, passports as part of new global digital health certificate. If you're new to the channel, by the way, I can't say certain words or the video gets restricted or it gets taken down and you know all this weird stuff that they love to do on, on these platforms. Uh, the, the WHO said it will take up the EU's passport framework as part of a new global network of digital health certificates. So remember, this was just a temporary thing. They promised to disband this entire network after it was all over, but now they're not disbanding it, they're actually taking it even wider. So what did they say? Today is a new chapter in global cooperation on digital health. So again, they lied about all of this. It will help to place the WHO at the center, oh boy, here we go, of our global health architecture. Yeah, because they handled it really well over 2020 and 2021, didn't they? I don't think I need to say much more on this. You know where this is going. I don't wanna lead you too much. Make up your own opinions, make your own mind up. But it's pretty clear to me what's going on. This is um, not good. It's not, it's not good at all. It's not positive. Digital ID is coming in. All the GHG policies are coming in. All the carbon taxations coming in with the 15 minute cities, with all these new passports, all these global frameworks. If you thought 2020 was bad, even 2021 with the restrictions, you ain't seen nothing yet as the old saying goes. Um, I'll leave it there. I don't think there's much more to say on this today. Thanks for being a subscriber here. Take care. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.